And here we are at the Plug Awards, my favourite plug star in the world, well, the tallest. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Vic Brickman, how are you? Very well indeed, thanks, Phil. And you? I'm very good. And you're the veteran of these things. Well, you're the veteran full stop. Yeah. Um, so, so this evening, what are you doing? I'm presenting the Prog God Award uh, to my great, great friend and fellow band member, John Anderson. And can I ask, when you were in Yes, apart from Chris Squire perhaps, were you and John the tallest and shortest in the band? Chris was about half an inch taller than me. Yeah. And uh, Steve's quite tall, yeah. but not as tall. Uh, John, and Bill was tall. Bill was, was six foot, yeah. yeah. So John was the diminutive member of the band. And in fact, in the new band, once again, he is the, bless him, he is the diminutive member. Having said that, you know, he's, uh, he's such a presence that we all think he's seven foot tall anyway. He is, mentally, I think. So tell me, so let's talk about the new band a bit. How does it feel to rekindle that relationship musically? It is absolutely fantastic. I mean, John and I, we've done some duo stuff together anyway over, over the years. And uh, uh, obviously, we did the Union Tour together with Trev as well. That was 82 odd shows. Plus, Trev did some work on my return to the Centre of the Earth album in yeah. 1998. He did, he did that. We've remained in touch. And we always said this was something we wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, to be brutally honest with you, it, we kept talking about it. Trev came over to England. We, we had a meeting. We spoke. And John loved the idea. Trev's been incredibly busy because he's like one of the big film composers. He's a film of, score now, doesn't he? Yeah. Of Hollywood. I mean, he's done some major films like, you know, Titans and Con Air and, and Armageddon and things. He's really hot, hot property in Hollywood. And he was busy. Uh, John's been busy with his stuff. I've been up to my neck in it. And it was one of those things we said, we'll, we'll get round to it, we'll get round to it, we'll get round to it. Um, we just kept, we kept getting bombarded by lots of fans saying, well, look, are you going to do it? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get round to it. And then to be honest, when Chris died, it hit us all very hard because I think more than anything, because we all realised, hold on, we're, we're mortal, we're not immortal here. And we got on the fire train and said, if we don't do it now, we probably never will. So we all then uh, made time uh, we actually obviously had to uh, fulfil commitments that we all had but then we started working around that after that we would keep the period free uh, so we would uh, uh, which is exactly what we've done I, I've just come back from LA where we were doing some pre-rehearsals for the main rehearsals which start next week and the tour starts October the 4th in Orlando and we completed the band with uh, Lee Pomeroy, who I still maintain is the finest bass player I've ever worked with. I mean, the man. What, even better than Chris? It, yes, and I'll tell you for why. Because Chris was his hero. And he can do, he learned everything that Chris did because Chris was his absolute hero. But what he's done then, he's, he's, he's taken it another stage further. But, as he would be the first one, he could not have done that without Chris. So yes, while he is the best bass player I, I've worked with, he's taken his uniqueness from, from Chris, you know, because Chris was his absolute, absolute hero. So Lee is unbelievable. And a drummer friend of uh, Trevor Rabin is called uh, Lou uh, Molino the, the third, who is just jaw-dropping. I, I played with him for the first time, say, a couple of weeks, so two or three weeks ago. And the best way I can describe him, he's got, he's got the rockiness of Alan White and the technique of Bill Bruford. So he and Lee together are just mercy. So we've got a five-piece band that we are uh, just puts a, a huge smile on our face, you know. So it, it really is good, I have to say, if I say so myself. And going back to, obviously, John being the, the god tonight, yeah. what, is, what, what about playing with him now feels like playing with him then? Is it like the time has just disappeared? Well, as I say, we've, we did the, the duo shows together, so we have worked, we did three tours together over the last sort of seven, eight years. Yeah. Uh, what I mean in a band dynamic? In a band dynamic, you know, when, when we started playing, because uh, we were rehearsing, uh, Trevor was rehearsing with Lou and, and Lee uh, for about a couple of weeks before I arrived out there. Uh, then I didn't have my rig out there. I was just working with a, a couple of keyboards just to work in our arrangements and things of what we were going to do. And then John came down uh, to, uh, to to LA. To LA. And when he started singing, um, it was just like he'd come home. It really felt like 
John, this is where you're meant to be. This is what you're meant to be meant to be doing. And Trev is just playing. He's outrageous. So it's uh, it's it is has the potential to be a, a band with a lot of longevity. It really does, you know. So uh, well, age aside. Age aside, well, you know, what, what's age these days? I mean, you, you know, it's, uh, I, I mean, we're very pleased that Lee Pomeroy is in the band because he brings the average age of the band down to 62.2. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Trev looks great. John looks great. Uh, John's 72. Trev's a youngster, he's 62. I'm 67. Lou Molino's 60, I think, and, uh, and Lee's 48 or something like that. But it's, it's not... It's not how old you are, it's how you feel and how you feel with the music and what you do. And it, it does, you know, they say music is ageless and timeless. And if you, f if you have that attitude when you go in, you know, it, 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 it doesn't really matter how old you are. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of musicians here tonight, that there's no doubt about it, have matured with, with age. You know, that to some extent, it might sound a bit hackneyed, but to some extent, I look upon prog rock uh, as a fine wine. You know, uh, what vintage is, you know, there's a label on the bottle. The label might be 1972, but you only get the best out of it when you open the bottle, you know, and I think that's very much with prog rock. I mean, you look at, uh, at how people have really matured. I look at my great friend Steve Hackett, how over the, the last sort of six, seven, eight years, you know, he, he's. You know, it's unbelievable what he's what he's been doing and um, matured. So it's not um, it's not something that I think is age is a worry, providing you know that uh, you don't think, oh, I'm in 1974. The moment you think that, you've had it. You start dressing badly. And finally, <laughs> he, uh, John Anson, uh, for God, obviously, what does John actually mean to you as a human being? He means a lot. He's been a great friend. We've been through a lot together. We first met in 1970 uh, when Straub supported Yes in Hull, would you believe? And that's where, and I joined the band in 71. And John and I have been on many adventures together. We argued like crazy when we first met for the first year. And because uh, John couldn't understand where I was coming from and I couldn't understand where he was coming from. And it was very interesting. It was about 1976 in Montreux, in a, in a pub called the White Horse in Montreux, where we sat down and we came to the conclusion that even though we, for some reason, we seemed to disagree about so many things, the end product was always what both of us were after. So we came to the conclusion, we came on this analogy, that at that time to fly to Japan from London, you went two ways. You either went via Anchorage in America or you went via Moscow. And we worked on the principle that our end product was the equivalent of flying to Japan. But we were just going different routes. Yeah. So there would be periods of time when we were so far apart and yet we were both going to the same place. So we learned to understand each other that I'm not sure where he's at at the moment, but I know where we're going to end up. And from that moment on, we've had, I mean, we've always had a friendship, but a real friendship and, a, and, an, un, and an understanding. And John doesn't query some of the mad things that I suggested to And I'm the same with John, because I know at the end of the day, we're both after the same thing. Thank you, fella. You're most welcome, Philip.